So hello everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to be showing the difference in developing film between beer and coffee. So let's just get started with it. So hello everybody and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, like this video if you find it interesting, comment down below once you've seen it and let me know what your thoughts are between the two. Uh, it's gonna get pretty interesting. So let's get started with this. Now obviously developing film in beer and coffee is nothing new. There's been plenty of people that have done both, but I have never seen a comparison between the two. And since, you know, one's an upper, one's a downer, they're both very common household items, depending on your age, uh, I figured why not test it and see which one is better since chemicals seem to be harder to find, at least lately for me. Of course, I haven't dived deep into searching, but you know, I figured why not try this? So before all the professionals give me a hard time about the chemicals and the ratios and just all the science behind it, let me just get this out of the way. I don't know the science behind it. This is the first time I'm trying both of these. Uh, I've done a little bit of research some general knowledge. I've developed plenty of black and white and color film on my own with D76 and C41, but I've never done it uh, with these. If you have input and advice, that's greatly appreciated, but don't come screaming at me because I didn't get the science and everything exactly right. I'm experimenting. Disclaimer done. Let's continue. So I shot two rolls of T-Max 400, which you'll see here. Of course, you'll see in the overhead as well. Uh, identical film, both TMAX 400 from the same box of film, so there's not going to be any variations. They should be pretty much identical as far as how they are exposed, all that kind of stuff. wanted to make sure that was the case. I shot both of them on the Bronica ETR, which I am enjoying a little bit more lately now that I have more experience with it and kind of know more about the system. A few quick things about the Bronica ETR from my previous video. First of all, I talked about how I had an issue with the pin in one of these film backs. So it was slightly bent. So it's supposed to come over the hole and that releases the lock on the film so that you can take the shot. So what was happening is since it was slightly bent, it kept knocking against that wall uh, and occasionally it would come over, but most times it was knocking. So all I did was go in and bend the pin and it slides over smoothly now. There's no issues with that film back. Uh, after taking apart both of them, the screws were different. So I'm assuming that it was repaired or the other one was repaired. And so it was just a minor issue, nothing serious. Works perfectly now. Other note with the Bronica ETR is that there is actually a light meter in this eye level viewfinder. Uh, after the last video, a lot of people left me comments explaining some more things about it that I couldn't find online. Since everything I saw said the ETRS had the eye level viewfinder with the light meter, everything I read said that there was no light meter for the ETR. However, I guess the eye level viewfinder has a light meter. I'm assuming if I take this off, there won't be a meter. I wouldn't think so. But so there is a meter in the eye level viewfinder. It's just, it's just a little weird, but that does make me feel better since it does require a battery that you get a light meter out of it. So I do like that. Um, so how it works is in order to use the viewfinder, there's a button here that says uh, AE. Now that button is for your light meter. What you do is you look through the eyepiece, press it. It will tell you what your shutter speed should be based upon what your ISO is and your aperture on the lens. And of course the lighting scene. Um, I like that. It's nice. I just hate where this button is and how it works. This button doesn't to press. Um, it's not always on. It doesn't come on when you have pressed the shutter. You have to hold this button down. So I had pressed this before thinking maybe it was a lock for the eye level viewfinder, which obviously wasn't the case. Um, and after pressing it, looking through the viewfinder, nothing was happening. So I just figured either it was broken or um, it was just, I don't even know what it was but you have to hold it while looking through the viewfinder in order to get your reading. I do not like that, and I do not like the positioning, because as you can see, it's kind of awkward to press that there. Uh, I just, I don't like how that is. But nevertheless, I do like that it has a meter. So moving on from the Bronica. We're developing film in Dogfish Head. This is their Super 8 beer. Now this beer was specifically made to both drink and use to develop film. Very interesting. I'm sure there's plenty of videos out there. I know the art of photography does a video on that. He's probably one of the most knowledgeable people to watch a video on that. 
Uh, and also I'm developing an instant coffee. So I'm using this instead of regular coffee grounds because with this, you just pour it into your mixture of water and everything like that else. And you don't have to worry about ratios and everything like that. Coffee can be tricky. If you know anything about coffee, I was a barista, not at a Starbucks, cause I don't consider that really coffee. I was at a barista at a coffee shop where we actually roasted all that stuff. And so once you know about coffee, there's a lot of variations. It's just like beer. You have IPAs that are very hoppy and acidic. You have pale ales, you have dark ales, all that kind of stuff. With coffee, you have light roast, medium, dark roast. Dark roasts are basically burnt, which is what Starbucks sells. Um, so there's gonna be a lot less flavor in it, uh, a lot less acidity than a medium or lighter roast. Also, you have different regions, Ethiopian, Honduras, all that kind of stuff, which can play into the flavors and different things like that. I didn't want to have any of those variables kind of influence my uh, outcome. So I decided to go, what most people use is just instant coffee. Um, these are gonna be pretty much the same around the board from what I understand. Now, Dogfish Head has a systematic approach to putting together the ingredients to develop their film. I'm gonna put both the beer and the coffee lists up for you in just a minute so you can see the ingredients, times, everything that I used before we look at the outcomes. So for the Super 8, what they say to do, heat the water uh, to 90 degrees. They tell you to use 17 fluid ounces or 500 milliliters, uh, then to add a half ounce of vitamin C and then one and three fourths ounce of baking soda. That is gonna be the final concoction for your Super 8. Uh, then it says to wait five minutes before you start mixing it with the film and so on and so forth. Now for coffee, there's a lot of variables that go into it. I haven't, there's nothing solid, but so the one I chose to go with as far as timing and like that, 12 ounces of water at room temp, uh, three fourths teaspoons of vitamin C, and also five teaspoons of instant coffee, and then three and a half teaspoons of washing soda. Now to clarify, washing soda is definitely not baking soda. I thought it was, I thought it was just a Canadian and European thing, no offense. Um, you know, it's like washroom and bathroom. I just figured washing soda and baking soda, but whatever. So of course you stir it all. Remember this is at room temperature. Now this mixture says to pour it into the tank. So it says to slowly agitate for one minute and then agitate er, three times per minute for the following 11 minutes. So 12 minutes total, not 15 minutes. And then of course you're only mixing about three times. So what I'm used to is mix or agitating for the first 10 seconds of every minute. So that's what I did is I agitated for 10 seconds, let it sit the rest of that minute, and then 10 seconds, let it sit the rest of that 50 seconds, etc. Similar, but different. But it is definitely not a continuous agitation for 12 minutes. Whereas with the beer, it's a continuous agitation for 15 minutes. So again, what I did was I shot the TMX 400 and the Bronica ETR. I have two film backs for that. So I was able to shoot, switch the film back and shoot again. The lighting settings and everything are exactly the same. The scene is basically the same minus movement, everything like that. So the results will just come down to how it is developed, which is what I wanted. Uh, I have already developed the film in these two chemicals. I do need to go scan those first. Developing takes a long time. You have to let it sit and dry all that stuff. So I got that out of the way. So I'm gonna go get those scanned. We'll come back here, compare the results and see where things are. Okay. So uh, first of all, let me start by saying I messed up. Now, my original thoughts were that the coffee was going to develop better than the beer. Uh, reason being is coffee is very acidic from what I know. Beer, depending on the beer, it can be very acidic, but in general, my assumption, and from what I know personally, is that coffee is still very much more acidic. In both cases, though, it's still not quite enough. You can develop with just beer or just coffee, but you'd have to let it sit for hours just because it doesn't have high enough concentration of the chemicals it needs, uh, which is why you have to add the vitamin C, the baking soda, Soda, the washing soda, all that kind of stuff to kind of bump up the chemical level to speed up the development time. That being said, all the results I've seen in videos that I've watched and stuff from developing in coffee have all looked better than developing in this specific beer, which is my, why my thoughts were that developing in coffee were going to be better. That being said, um, I believe I was correct, but I did mess up a bit. So with the coffee, I neglected to double check the numbers that I looked up on the internet from somebody else. Uh, so I had about 15 ounces of fluid, 
Whereas with the beer, it calls for 17 ounces. If I'd have looked at the milliliters, I would have caught on because I know what I usually use to develop with D76 or C41, all that kind of stuff. But because I decided to look at the ounces for some reason, uh, I did not have enough fluid in the tank for the 120 film. If it was regular 35 millimeter film, probably would have been enough, but it wasn't. So that is why looking at this, uh, the bottom one here, this is the coffee. So you have, of course, that wave because the chemicals were not high enough in the tank to develop the entire roll of film. So I botched that. The experiment, however, is not ruined because of course the lower half is still developed. So we'll still be able to see some of the results. I will be doing coffee again, probably in the very next video, which I have planned and I've already kind of just shot. So I might as well just develop that film in coffee since it was a very easy process and I will show you an updated version of this as well. But this experiment is still very valid and you'll still be able to see the results significantly. Now the top is the beer. Of course, oops. Of course you can see a very big color difference. The beer slide is very uh, orange and yellow, whereas the coffee is, you know, dark black and a bit of green tint to it. Also with the beer, it is very, I would think, overdeveloped. Um, so you lost, I think, a lot of content in there, whereas the coffee, it looks like it's underdeveloped. So here's my thought process behind this. And those of you who know more, feel free to help with this conversation, don't just shoot it down. So when you develop film, temperature is very important, more so in color, but it does also play a big factor in black and white. So since the beer was heated up to 90 degrees, of course I let it cool uh, and mixed it and then got my film ready before using it. However, it was still definitely higher than the room temperature that I used for the coffee. Also for the beer, it's said to agitate continuously for the whole 15 minutes. Whereas with the coffee, it was just agitating 10 seconds of every minute. Of course, the full first minute. However, that does still play a big difference. So my thought process is maybe if I had agitated less or if I had done perhaps the first minute and then agitated 10 seconds for every minute after that for the beer, maybe it wouldn't be as blown out as you see here. I'd probably get a little more detail in there, I would think. Uh, whereas with the coffee, maybe if I had done it for 15 minutes uh, and agitated the first minute, two minutes, and then agitated 10 seconds every minute after that, maybe those results would be improved. Of course, maybe I should have used a little bit more instant coffee than the recipe I looked up. There's several different factors in there that can play a part. Eventually, I'm gonna use actual real coffee. I bought cheap Starbucks coffee specifically for the intention of developing film. And then I lived in more research and thought instant coffee would be a better first attempt because the ratio is gonna be more exact. Whereas with making coffee, I can make it a very light or a very heavy um, cup of coffee, depending on how many grams of beans that I use, how much water I use, the temperature, all that kind of stuff plays into it. So I figured this would keep it very simple for the first go around. We are gonna look at the results. So again, looking here, you can see scanning these were very different in scanning. I had of course had to, or had to up the shutter speed um, significantly for the beer and I had to drop it significantly for the coffee to make sure I got enough contrast, highlights and shadows and everything like that to be able to compare the two. Pretty much came out as I thought it would. You see this one, first image is on, we went camping for a couple days, so I took some shots there. There were some shot in pretty low light and I didn't wanna drop the shutter speed below 125, which is why a few are underexposed for both ends. Uh, and the others were shot just the other day in full sunlight, so those are gonna be more accurately exposed. But the difference between these first two images that were shot exactly at the same time, within you know 30 seconds, uh, you can see there's very little detail in the image with the beer uh, and the coffee, although yes, it's not fully developed on the one side, there's a lot more contrast, a lot more detail, uh, better highlights and shadows, and uh, this isn't even you know the best image for an example. Second one here, group shot again, and this is still earlier in the day, this is probably 4.35 o'clock, so they're probably, there's still plenty of light. <clears throat> that one, not so much. This one, of course, you're gonna have a lot more contrast. So again, more contrast, blacks, whites, and you can see an actual image, whereas the previous one, not so much. Third image here again, same thing, not a lot there. Next image, much more detail, much more contrast. Yeah, it's just not much there on these. That's a bit better there. So you can see overall, there's very little contrast left in the beer. Um, now I'm probably gonna do this again as well, and I'm gonna drop that development. Maybe I'll let the chemical sit longer till it's 100% room temperature, and I will not agitate the full 15 minutes. I'll probably do the first minute, minute and a half, and then I'll do 10 seconds every minute after that. 
because again, you can see from the two different here that it is just completely different. Uh, this guy here at the green market, so this is shot at like noon. So there's plenty of sunlight, plenty there to get. This is the coffee, again, leaps and bounds better, very much different. And the coffee was actually easier uh, because of course I didn't have to heat it up or anything like that. I just mixed it with room temperature water and I was good to go and just apply the fixer after that. Again, with the beer, again, with the coffee, again, a lot more detail. So for the Super 8 Dogfish Head, they give you an exact recipe of what you need to do. Uh, I'm gonna look through it and see if maybe people have modified that recipe or that development cycle to see if they've gotten better results. Of course, I was worried about the acidity of this and everything like that, and then since it required 15 ounces and two of these are 12 ounces, or two of the, and these are 12 ounces each, there was some left in the second can that I used. Uh, so of course I tried it and it is very uh, acidic and fruity, which now looking at the recipe here, on the can you just see raspberries, uh, cherries, lemons, limes, all that kind of stuff. And when you taste it, if you are allowed to taste it, I'm not suggesting that anyone under the proper age test that. Again, this is just developing film. We're not a drinking channel or anything like that. Uh, it is very acidic. It is very fruit forward. Um, so that does play a part in the coffee. And I'm assuming, of course, they added the, those kind of ingredients in to make it suitable for developing film. So what are my thoughts on beer versus coffee? If you're looking for a quick, easy method, these are definitely options. Again, of course, you still have to get your fixer and your stop bath, but these are relatively simple. The beer takes a little bit more time and it has a very different look. It's very faded, very vintagey. Uh, whereas with the coffee, I got a lot more contrast in my blacks and whites. Uh, it was much easier to do. It just took a few minutes to mix the three different ingredients in water and then dump it in there and it's 15 minutes later, uh, boom, your film's developed. Of course, you have your stop bath and all that kind of stuff and your fixer. So this comes down to what kind of a look you want and a little bit of ease of use. It's gonna be easy to get um, instant coffee off the shelf anywhere, whereas the Super 8 beer, uh, not sure how readily available that is. You might have to shop around a bit for that. Uh, and of course, how long they make it, who knows, whereas instant coffee, or coffee in general, you'll be able to get forever. So that's a little bit more reliable if you're looking for something to replace your normal developing materials. So I hope you found that useful and entertaining. Again, I'm gonna be doing with the coffee again very soon. I'm gonna change the development times up a bit and just see if I can get better results, maybe a little more contrast, a little more highlights. It looks like it's a little bit underdeveloped, where again, the beer is overdeveloped. The beer I will be trying again eventually, uh, but the coffee, since I messed that one up, I think that's a quick and easy one that I can redo and see if I can get some better results with the same instant coffee. Eventually I'll get down to getting the right ratios and actually brewing my own coffee and trying that to seeing what results I get with that. But that requires, I think, a little bit more math and a little bit more know-how on the chemicals, ratios, things like that to make sure you get the right amount of coffee. Whereas instant coffee, it's very easy to make sure you get the proper same dosage every single time. Thanks for watching. Make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.